Pinna. There's a special kind of thrill that comes with finally getting something that's been in your shopping cart or on your wish list for a while. And that feeling is even better if you know you got the best deal for it. That's why the savviest shoppers shop with Rakuten. They get the brands they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. The idea is simple. Stores pay Rakuten for connecting them with shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Ugg, Levi's, and many more. Plus, Rakuten lets you stack sales on top of cash back, so you're not missing out on any other deals or rewards you might already be a part of. It's easy to use, and you get your cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. Hi, my name is Adam Gitwitz. I'm an author. I'm also a storyteller. I like telling all kinds of stories, but I especially like telling grim fairy tales. You may think you know grim fairy tales, and you may think that they are sweet and boring. But listen, those tales you heard were the cute, happy, little kid bedtime versions of the grim tales. The original grim fairy tales aren't like that at all. They're weird, and sometimes gross and often scary. In other words, they're grim. And I'm about to walk into a classroom and tell one of the original grim, grim tales to a bunch of kids. Do you want to join me? Do you want to hear a grim fairy tale? Let me help you decide. On a scale of grim, grimmer, and grimmest, the story I'm going to tell you today is grimmer. It's not very scary, but there are some moments where terrible things happen. These terrible things are weird and not at all realistic. They may or may not involve an army of pigs. But even so, I want to warn you. If I get to a part of the story and you start to feel scared or uncomfortable, this is what you could do. You could turn down the volume and count to five, then turn the volume back up. If it still seems like a part you don't want to hear, just turn the volume down and count to five again. You know how much weird and gross and scary you're ready for. You know what you need. Okay, I'm at the classroom door now. There are kids inside, waiting to hear a grim fairy tale. So, are you coming in? Grim, grimmer, grimmest. So this is a story. It's one of my favorite grim fairy tales. It is weird. It is a weird story. The story is called Hans, My Hedgehog. (laughs) Yes, someone's excited about Hans, My Hedgehog. Once upon a time, there was a man with 12 children. When the man's wife got pregnant for the 13th time, the man said, I'd rather have a hedgehog than another child. Well, he shouldn't have said that. Because when the child was born, it was half human and half hedgehog. The child's parents named it the only thing you can name a child under those circumstances. Hans, my hedgehog. Yes, his first name was Hans, his last name was Hedgehog, and his middle name was Mai. That's weird. And that is the only thing that you can name a child under those circumstances. Can you think of any other names you can even possibly name a kid like that? Yes? Hedgehog, hedgehog, hedgehog. Okay, I guess that's possible. (laughs) Hedgehog man. Hedgehog man. Oh, I know. Epic hedgehog. Epic hedgehog dude. Hedgehog 54. Hedgehog 54? Fred. Fred. (laughs) Okay. Maybe you could name him Fred. So, first name Hans, middle name Mai, last name Hedgehog, was a little half-boy, half-hedgehog. None of his 12 brothers and sisters wanted to play with him, and his parents made him sleep behind the stove, because they didn't want him in the first place, and they certainly didn't want a half-boy, half-hedgehog. It is very difficult to be half boy, half hedgehog, because human children don't want to play with a hedgehog, and hedgehog children, well, they can't talk or hold a ball, and I think they might be nocturnal. So it was a tough life for little Hans. Hans's only friend was the family's rooster. Hans would climb on the rooster's back and fly around the yard, until eventually he got rather good at riding a flying rooster. 
But roosters are like this big. Yeah, he's not very big. <laughs> hedgehogs are tiny. And if he's half oh, yeah, human, half hedgehog, I don't know how big he is, but maybe he's small enough to ride on the back of a rooster. <laughs> maybe he's like, ha half of his body is like human size and the other half is just like the skin and there's a tiny hedgehog part here. That would be very hard for him to walk around if that were the case. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, Maybe he's just like a <coughs> tiny boy that has like a little bit, that looks a little bit like a hedgehog, that like has a human face, but it's like a hedgehog. Mm. It's a big With body. Right. And also his it's size makes sense because they said he sleeps behind the stove. That's true, so he couldn't be that big. That's true. Yeah. One day, Hans's father went to town and came home with 13 gifts for his 13 children. Yay! All Hans's brothers and sisters got to choose their gifts first, and they got all sorts of wonderful toys and books and sweets. When they were all done choosing, the only thing left was a musty set of bagpipes. So Hans, my hedgehog, took the bagpipes. And he became so good at playing them that the family's pigs began following him everywhere just to listen to the sweet sound of the bagpipes. You guys know what bagpipes are? No. Bagpipes, it's like a bag with pipes on it, and you play it, it's a Scottish musical instrument. Oh, the famous song that they play is <laughs> Exactly. Well, Hans, my hedgehog, played those bagpipes morning till night, riding around the front yard on the rooster, being chased by the pigs. It was very embarrassing to the family. Everyone's walking by and seeing Hans riding a little rooster and playing bagpipes with pigs chasing around the yard. One day, Hans's father came storming out into the yard. I can't take it anymore. No one will visit us because of the hedgehog boy in the yard, and I hate the sound of bagpipes. Take the rooster. Take some pigs, take those infernal pipes, and never come back. And just like that, Hans was cast out into the great wide world. It's kind of weird that uh, that they're getting embarrassed for them playing bagpipes instead of it just being a hedgehog. Totally. There are weirder things than the bagpipes going on. Yes. Why did he throw them out? Why? Why did he just? Why, did he just... why didn't he just throw out the bagpipes instead of his son? That's a good question. Why didn't, why did he even get him bagpipes in the first place? Good point, his father was the one who bought the bagpipes. Totally unfair. Hans rode his rooster to the forest, playing his bagpipes as the pigs followed behind. He found a tall tree and had the rooster fly to the top. And there Hans lived, playing his bagpipes and raising pigs. The pigs were happy and had lots of piglets. The rooster was happy and made friends with all the birds. But Hans my hedgehog was not happy. He was lonely. Very, very lonely. One evening, Hans heard a man crying for help. Hans thought, Oh good, maybe he'll be my new friend. So Hans flew his rooster through the forest to the place where the cries were coming from. There, sitting at the base of a tree, was a king wearing a golden crown. The king was frightened when he saw Hans. But Hans assured the king, I just want to help you. The king told Hans, I am lost, and it is too dark to find my way home. It is cold, and I am hungry. Oh, don't worry, said Hans. And Hans, my hedgehog, built a fire, slaughtered a pig, and he and the king with the golden crown ate and talked and sang and played bagpipes all night. In the morning, Hans showed the king the way out of the forest. The king was so grateful for Hans's kindness that he said to Hans, What in all the world would you like? Name it, and you shall have it. What do you think Hans would want? Yes. A family. A family, interesting. What do you think? Maybe not to be half hedgehog anymore. Oh, interesting. What do you think? More bad pipes. More bad <laughs> pipes? What do you think? Uh, friends? Maybe friends. Hans said, I am very lonely, and more than anything in the world, I want a wife to talk to and tell jokes with and sing songs with, and to be my friend. The king was so moved, and in such a mood of generous gratitude, that he said, Come to my kingdom one year from today, and you shall marry my daughter. Is that a fair thing for a father to do? To be like, you can marry my daughter even though she's never met you, and you're a weird half-hedgehog, half-dude? No. no. Probably not fair. Yeah, it's fair. You think it's fair? For the king. <laughs> Just yeah. to be able to like boss his daughter around? Yeah. Blah, 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 you do this, you do that, you're oh. my servant, blah, 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 I don't care. So you're saying he's the dad, and he gets to tell them what to do. Yeah. And you're saying, what? She decides if she wants to marry him or not. Okay. I have a question for you. If your mom came home and said, meet this person, you're going to marry her, what would you say? No. 
Oh, well, it sounds like that wouldn't be fair if a father did that to a daughter. The king with the golden crown set off for his kingdom. But when he returned home, he realized that he had been foolish to promise his daughter to a half-boy, half-hedgehog in the woods, no matter how kind that half-boy, half-hedgehog had been. He told everyone in his kingdom, If you see a half-boy, half-hedgehog riding a rooster, you should kill him immediately. <gasps> yes. Liar. I knew Maybe it will get a little grim now. Meanwhile, Hans my Hedgehog couldn't have been happier. In one year's time, he would be married to a princess, and he wouldn't be lonely anymore. Just then, he heard another voice crying in the woods. Hans thought, Huh, maybe I'll find another friend. So he flew his rooster to where the cries were coming from. It was another king, this time wearing a silver crown. Much the same thing happened as before. The king was lost. He was afraid of Hans my hedgehog. He's like, ah, crazy rooster hedgehog thing. <laughs> but Hans made a fire, slaughtered a pig, and he and the king ate and talked and sang and played bagpipes all night. In the morning, Hans showed the king the way out of the forest. The king was so grateful for Hans's kindness that he said, What in all the world would you like? Name it and you shall have it. And Hans said, I am very lonely, and more than anything in the world, I want a friend to talk to and tell jokes with and sing songs with. The king was so moved and in such a mood of generous gratitude that he said, Come to my kingdom one year from today and you shall marry my daughter. And off he went, before Hans could say, Uh, I've already got a princess to marry. But when the king with the silver crown returned home, he realized that he had been foolish to promise his daughter to a half-boy, half-hedgehog in the woods, no matter how kind that half-boy, half-hedgehog had been. He told everyone in his kingdom, If you see a half-boy, half-hedgehog riding a rooster, you should kill him immediately. Well, Hans was super happy now. In a year and a day, he'd be married to two princesses. He thought, if that was possible, whatever. But just then, he heard another voice cry in the woods. Oh. What is wrong with these kings? Don't they have maps, he thought. <laughs> he flew down to find a king with a copper crown lost in the woods. First gold, then silver, now copper. The king was frightened at first, of course, because you gotta admit, Hans flying through the darkness on the back of a rooster is like some crazy nightmare you have after your mom has given you cold medicine. <laughs> but Hans made a fire, slaughtered a pig, and he and the king ate and talked and sang and played bagpipes all night. The next morning, Hans showed him the way home, and the king was so grateful, he said, I am but a poor king, but I will gladly give you anything you ask for the kindness you have shown me. Well... I am kind of lonely. Hans began. You shall marry my daughter, the king exclaimed. Hello. Come to my kingdom a year from today. And off he went. Hans tried to call after him. That's okay. It's just, uh, awkward. But the king was already out of sight. Well, as the months passed, the rooster played with the birds, and the pigs had so many piglets that the whole forest was covered with pigs. But Hans, my hedgehog, grew lonelier and lonelier. Finally, a year had gone by, and Hans set out to claim the daughter of the king with the golden crown as his wife. Okay, let's just be clear. It is not okay to, like, go somewhere and claim somebody as a wife, okay? You have to, like, ask them and get to know them. If somebody comes to your house and is like, I claim you as my husband, you should be like, um, no, okay? Or wife. Or wife. Or wife, exactly. He couldn't wait to meet the daughter of the king with the golden crown. He wanted to tell jokes and ask her questions and sing and play bagpipes late into the night. He rode his rooster, played his bagpipes, and led his thousands and thousands of pigs to the kingdom of the Golden Crown. That's good because maybe they're like, you know those pigs that like are really vicious, what are they called? Like the boars. Pigs? Boars. 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 Maybe he has boars. Maybe he has so boars. He could take down the king. Hans arrived at the kingdom as happy and excited as he could be. He told his pigs to wait outside the gates because it is rude to bring thousands of pigs into somebody's house. <laughs> and he rode the rooster into the kingdom. As soon as the people of the kingdom saw Hans coming, they began to point and whisper. Hans, my hedgehog, was used to stairs, so he continued on toward the castle. But the whispers grew into shouts, and soon a dozen men charged Hans, brandishing axes and knives and shovels. They shouted, Kill him! Kill him in the name of the king! Poor little Hans was terrified. He rode his rooster up into the air above their heads, but someone hurled a shovel, which hit the rooster in the head, and both the rooster and Hans went tumbling to the earth. More and more people came, 
calling for Hans's blood, saying, Kill him! Kill him! Their blades came closer and closer. Knowing not what to do, Hans whipped his bagpipes from his back and played his pig's favorite tune. There was a sound of distant thunder. And then Hans's thousands of pigs stampeded into the kingdom. And they trampled the men with the weapons into a bloody pulp. Oh, Hans, I, I knew that, would now there's blood. An army. Hans, you just knew there was going to be an army of pigs? Hans revived his poor rooster. Getting hit in the head with a flying shovel is not fun, but he was okay. And flew him to the castle, with the army of pigs stampeding behind them. Hans flew up to the king's window. The king had seen the army of pigs trample his subjects. He cowered in fear. He cried to Hans. Don't hurt me. Just take my daughter and go. But the princess screamed. Don't make me go with that monster. Hans was disgusted. He said, I don't want your daughter. I have two other princesses waiting for me. But I'll be back for your crown. And with that, Hans flew out the window and led his army of pigs away. The next day, Hans came to the kingdom of the king with the silver crown. Hans left his pigs outside again. But no sooner had he entered the kingdom than men grabbed axes and knives and shovels and rushed at him, shouting, Kill him! Kill him in the name of the king! Hans flew up in the air. But again, someone threw a shovel and hit the rooster, knocking the poor bird unconscious. Again. Hans was surrounded as dozens and dozens of men came closer and closer, their blades shining in the morning light. But Hans swung his bagpipes from his back, played his pig's favorite tune, and again thousands of pigs came stampeding into the kingdom and trampled Hans's attackers to death. Hans mounted his rooster, who was fine again, don't worry about it, and flew to the castle, followed by his pigs. He flew up to the king's window. The king with the silver crown cowered in fear and cried, Take my daughter! Just don't hurt me! But the princess screamed, He's a hideous monster! Don't make me go with him! Hans was disgusted. I don't want your daughter. I have another wife waiting for me. But I'll be back for your crown. He's gonna be like the king of at least two kingdoms. And Hans flew out the window and led his army of pigs away. The next day, Hans arrived at the kingdom of the king with the copper crown. He left his pigs outside and went in. As soon as the people of the kingdom saw him, they started pointing and whispering. Then, all of a sudden, they rushed at him, carrying flowers and ribbons and musical instruments. Because the copper copper king never said to murder him. They lifted Hans on their shoulders and carried him in a joyful procession to the castle, where the king and his daughter were waiting. The princess was a little frightened of Hans at first, but she had heard such kind things about him from her father over the past year that she and Hans fell to talking, and he told her jokes and asked her questions, and within minutes, they were very much in love. They were married that very night. Whenever they say in lots of fairy tales they were married that very night, how did they arrange that? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. Well, they did know he was coming. Yeah, so... So maybe, maybe they planned ahead. But you're right, the logistics are problematic. Once Hans and the princess were married, the king gave Hans his copper crown. The next day, Hans and the princess set out with Hans's army of pigs, and they conquered the kingdom of the silver crown and the kingdom of the golden crown. And from that day forth, Hans my hedgehog was known as Hans of the Three Crowns, King of the Three Kingdoms. And he and the princess lived happily ever after, telling each other jokes asking each other questions, and singing songs and playing bagpipes late into the night. Also, they had an army of pigs, which is awesome. The end. What happened with the pigs? Oh, they got them. You can't really hold down three kingdoms all at once unless you have an army of pigs. (laughs) And what are you going to (laughs) eat? Hopefully not the pigs. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch, and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. 
Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest is a Pinna original production created and written by me, Adam Gidwitz, author of A Tale Dark and Grim. Produced and edited by Ilana Milner. Casting and voice direction by Paula Gammon Wilson. Sound design and mixing by Beat Street NYC. Location recording by Jason Gambrell and Evan Viola. Narrated by me, Adam Gidwitz. Characters voiced by Francesca Kahlo, Kylie Claxton, Kaylin Clinton, Nicholas Corda, Michael Crouch, Dylan Jones, George Lambert, Eddie Lee, Ilana Milner, Nofi Mitchell, Allison Rosenfeld, Erica Schroeder, and Billy Bob Thompson. Special thanks to the staff and students at Brooklyn Friends School and Manhattan Country School. You guys are amazing. The award-winning Pinna Original Podcast. This story is weird. (laughs) That keeps us on the edge of our seats. Until he heard a sound like thunder. It was coming closer and closer. Is back. Grim. Grimmer, Grimmest. Season 3, plus full access to Season 1 and 2, is now available by subscribing to Pinna, the only audio on-demand streaming service custom-made for kids 3 to 12. Not ready to subscribe? You can now purchase Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest and tons of other podcasts by season. Head to Pinna.fm to learn more. That's P-I-N-N-A dot F-M. 